caloric deficit and more plates more dates is an expert in health right so he just is dropping nuggets after nuggets after nuggets and um that is what the audience wants they don't care about you know how like like how their day was <laughs> they don't care yeah they want to know what's in it for them and if you could give them what's in it for them regardless of if you're famous or not you'll break through the algorithm Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests, and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting, and here's the episode. All right, guys. Josh Ordonia is here today. Man, I had you saved in my phone as uh, Josh Empathy Wines That's for a funny, while. Bro. That's, That's how funny. we met. I have yours as a Sean Jersey channel. <laughs> yeah. Classic, dude. Yeah, yeah, we met like five years ago. You were working for Gary at the time, right? Yep, Gary V. Yep. And you got that job through Instagram DMs. Correct. In cold Instagram DM. Shoot your shot, man. These days, I feel like that's more and more common, too. Yeah, honestly, too. And like, if you could pay for verification, Instagram has like a filter that you could filter through like top like relevance, like in clout, too. Like, mm -hmm. literally on your message request, they have a filter that you could filter through like top followers and verified and all that stuff. So it's like, there's ways to, you know, appear at the top nowadays, yeah. too. Yeah. Like back then, it was just, you just hope that they looked at their DMs when you sent it. Spray and pray. Yeah. Because they had no idea who was messaging them. Yep. But honestly, like back then, people weren't doing it that much. Pe people literally, like, I remember there was a time, like, Gary was telling an intern, like, like DM people you want to work for. And the intern's response was like, but people don't check their DMs. Mm -hmm. And it's like, bro, like, that doesn't matter. Like, so you're just going to write yourself off. You're not going to try yeah. before you even send the DM, you know? Absolutely. But yeah. yeah, man, seeing your journey has been incredible, you know, working for other people just learning a lot and then going out and starting your own business, social yep. media money. Yep. I mean, dude, you really pulled it off. So hats off to you. Appreciate it, man. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So when did you start social media money? Yeah. So really the journey really did start with like Gary Vee and all that stuff before that. Like, so when I was in college, um, I pretty much was in school for marketing and I wanted to get experience. So I was like, what's like the lowest hanging fruit that like I could do marketing now? Like you don't have to like graduate and then get experience. And I figured that social media marketing was like the best thing for that. So I would DM people that I wanted to work with. So I, that ended up getting me internships with Lonzo and LaMelo Ball, um, a couple campaigns with some NBA teams, and then with Gary V. And by the time I graduated, I had so many people like in my network know me as a social media marketing guy. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out an angle within social media that I could scale, right? Because at the time I was doing influencer marketing, ads, paid ads, organic photos, editing all this stuff and i was like all right which one do i like the most mm -hmm. and which one could i scale so that ended up being uh why i decided social media marketing or sorry uh short form right short form content and uh like a one day i literally like had all these clients doing organic paid influencer marketing all that stuff and i fired all of them <laughs> and i stuck with just short form marketing and then we just scaled out wow and what there. year was that uh, 2021. Okay. So we, we, I made the decision to go full short form content before YouTube shorts existed, before Instagram was reels. It mm. was like just photos for the most part. And there was like reels like every so often, but Instagram was like a purely photo platform. And, um, I just saw the opportunity where creators, like big creators, like weren't even posting TikToks. Like right. uh, our first short form client was Graham Stefan. And at the time Graham didn't believe in short form content at all. And I was like, bro, like, trust me, you need to do this. I'll do it for free. So we did it for free for like, I think three months, to be honest. It was pretty, a pretty long time mm -hmm. for free. And my thesis was if I could convince Graham Stefan to post short form, then I could convince Andre Jick mm. and then meet Kevin. And that's like a 10K a month thing right there. Just, right. right. Snowball effect. Exactly. So what ended up happening was I, I did convince Graham Stefan to post TikToks, but then we ended up convincing this whole other universe of, of clients like steve-o mike malak you know noah kagan all these people um instead of my original plan <laughs> but it ended up working out way better than i could have ever imagined yeah everything know? happens for a reason man yeah. so you had that foresight because back then people were making fun of tiktok yeah no th dude you should see what i felt at that time i literally felt like like i was in the future <laughs> you know I, I felt like what are what are you guys thinking not on tiktok and to be honest like the reason I'm good at creating TikToks is because I had like a TikTok addiction like during right like I would like during uh you know the lockdown there's nothing to do mm -hmm. I'll just be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and um so I knew the
Are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? Well, click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below and here's the episode, guys. So like how much retention you need for these videos to like perform in the algorithm. Mm. And um, so like I, I knew like how to make potent content that sticks with the audience. And uh, so I had just had so much conviction. I was like, there's no way, even if TikTok gets banned, mm -hmm. the the like mental addiction that people have to short form content will live forever. Right. Honestly, if TikTok got banned, that would almost be better for my business because China owns TikTok and then all the short form attention would go to Instagram and would go to YouTube shorts, mm. which is like, they're more kind of like uh, friendly for creators. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm glad you have that perspective because some people, now the market's so saturated, right? With clips clip yeah. guys or whatever, but you're still standing out. And I think it's because your edge of understanding consumer yeah. behavior. Yeah, exactly. There's exactly. people in like India for $3 an hour you could get to clip, but their videos suck. Yeah, well, to be honest, I think there's a lot of editors who are really great editors, but they don't understand the strategy behind the videos. So um, there's these accounts that are posting like day one of recreating clips into like fancy edits. Have you seen channels yeah, like I've seen that? that? Yeah, Yeah, so those guys, are great editors and the only reason they're even in your algorithm is because they're getting clips for example like from my clients that are already millions of views and then making them fancy mm. right so but the sauce is what's the video that gets the million views in the first place so my videos that get 10 million views plus they would get 10 million views with zero editing wow it is purely the cuts the retention and the storyline and the hook that gets it there and then the editing is kind of secondary to that. Mm -hmm. uh, the editing ha almost has nothing to do with uh, the virality. That's interesting, because a lot of people focus on the editing, yeah. the subtitles, the, the B-roll or whatever yeah. they focus on, but they should be focusing on the content. A absolutely, they should be focusing on the hook and they should be focusing on the story progression. They should be cutting out likes and ums and I think and I, you know what I mean? Mm. They should be cutting all that stuff out and keeping it as potent as, as possible. And people say, you know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, I went to the store, you know? They say that so much and people just leave it in the clips. <laughs> but but you need to cut all that out. Yeah, I'm yeah. laughing because I just posted a clip with that in it with Noah Kagan, actually. But yeah, really? yeah. It, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like a bad habit. I'm always like, you know, you yeah. know, like. Yeah, so so our team, like, not, we don't catch them every time, but like, even I just had like right now. Sometimes we, we cut out every like, we cut out every I think. People say I think all the time. Mm. So it's like, let's just say, Here's an example. Last year, I think we made $600,000. Cut out, I think. Wow. Cut out, I think. Last year, I made $600,000, right? And uh, it just adds more dominance to the like psychology. Because right. if you say, I think, it's you sound unsure. But like, so even when our clients say, I think, we cut it out. Yeah, I love that. Just just to give it more uh, credibility, more confidence when they're speaking. Yeah. Let's let's also establish your view count because you get more views than anyone I know. So how many views are you getting right now on a monthly basis? Bro, honestly, we don't do the math, but like, like let's just say like Steve-O last month, just on shorts, 66 million views. And that's one client. And that's one client. That's crazy. Uh, Ice Coffee Hour last month, just on shorts, 56 million views. Oh my God. Um, our biggest month for Ice Coffee Hour was 80 million views. Nelk Boys pulls 80 million views. So what does that mean? The Nelk boys are pulling 80 million views because of their crazy audience. Um, Judd, who makes the clips, he's a fantastic editor, right? Mm -hmm. you, do you know Judd? No. He's the guy who makes the clips. So for, for, for uh, Full Send. Got it. Right, but then Ice Coffee Hour and Graham Stefan is pulling the same views as the Nelk boys on shorts. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that the story is making up for the lack of uh, relevance, right? So Nelk boys is way more relevant than Graham Stefan, right. right? But the stories and the hooks and uh, the potency of, of like our clips gets us to that Nelk Boys level. So I always say too, people think that you need to be famous to for your videos to go viral. And all of all of the clips that went viral, you could change whoever was talking to a random person, and it would still get millions of views because mm. of the story. Wow. Yeah. That is really inspirational for people watching this, especially because like they assume just Graham Stephan's super famous and they can't get his views. Right now, the short form landscape is so competitive that you need to be creating content that is so it's either valuable, it's entertaining, it's inspirational, um, but most mostly like 
value and uh, stories do the most. So like, for example, like Mickey talking about the gambling stuff here, that's a story, right. people relate to it. Um, but really like value. So like Ice Coffee Hour right now is crushing it, even in long term, long form views mm -hmm. because of, they, they, do you know More Plates, More Dates? Yeah. So they interviewed More Plates, More Dates and they didn't ask him a single question about, so how did you get started? Mm. The right, right when they got on, what's the best health advice for men? If men are balding, what's the best way to prevent hair loss? Mm -hmm. uh, how do I lose calories? What's a, what's a caloric deficit? And More Plates, More Dates is an expert in health. Right. So he just is dropping nuggets after nuggets after nuggets. And um, that is what the audience wants. They don't care about you know, how, like, like how their day was. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. They want to know what's in it for them. And if you could give them what's in it for them, regardless of if you're famous or not, you'll break through the algorithm. I love that. Yeah, I try yeah. to limit that question. Like, what do you do for a living? And like, how's your day? Because yeah, you're yeah. right. Audience doesn't care. Well, what do you do for a living is actually a great question if they're like in the streets. Right, right. Yeah. Street if, interviews. Yeah, if they're in Those the streets. Those go so viral. Yeah, did you see the one we did with Noah Kagan of the oil founder? Or sorry, the, the oil ship millionaire in New York City? No. Yeah, it was just like Noah Kagan asked him like, so what do you do for a living? And the guy owns like oil ships mm -hmm. and he's a billionaire in New York and uh, it got like 11 million. And it was a random guy on the street? Random guy on the street, got wow. like 11 million views and the the people in the comments of the shorts like said like, I know this guy. So Noah like just filmed him once, didn't even get his name and then left, That's right? Crazy. And then the community, it went viral, so much viral that like people knew who he was, commented saying like, hey, I know that guy. Like, and then Noah Kagan connected with their community and then Noah filmed a, a long form interview with him from Insane, a short. Yeah, dude. so he didn't know him and then the community like helped him find him pretty much. Power social media. It's yeah. a really exciting time to be a creator right now, dude. Yeah. Cause there's podcasts getting acquired. There was one two days ago, oh, really? Smartless, got acquired okay. for a hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah, I mean right now we're in talks with, um, do you know who Mia Malkova is? Adult actress? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, so her podcast is like signed by like Bobby Lee's okay. podcast network. So like people see a podcast and they think, oh, it's just some chick just talking on camera, but they don't know that the, the business thing behind it. Yeah. Um, there's people signing creators. Um, I mean, even even with our shorts, like, like you know, we make like six to nine K a month just mm -hmm. from our shorts revenue. Wow. Yeah. So like uh, the revenue that these clips produce, it's, that's pretty significant. I mean, especially too, if you're kind of like have a regular job mm -hmm. and you start posting short form content like daily, you're making $9,000 in a month. Like that's pretty insane. That's really good. And that's yeah. not even including sponsors. No sponsors, purely from the views of YouTube shorts. Yeah. And uh, TikTok on the other hand too is also paying now. And uh, Instagram also has monetization now yeah. too. I just got it two days ago. Yeah, so it's it's very selective. It, not every account gets it on Instagram, but the way to get it is you have to be posting daily. You have to be getting good views, and they'll invite you. Mm. And it and it doesn't it doesn't pop up as a notification. You have to go into the settings, um, go to like the top right gear icon, and then um, it's called like uh, what's it called? Ads on Reels or uh, mine's on feed, I think. Yeah, ads on feed or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and so basically look into the settings. And you'll find it in there if yeah. you're if you're invited to be monetized. I'm curious what their yeah. CPMs will be. I feel like YouTube will always be highest, but uh, yeah. if Instagrams are decent, that's exciting. Insta that's, yeah, Instagrams that's will be low. Um, TikTok is the highest right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you heard of the Creativity Program beta? Yeah, yeah. Are you on it? I don't think so. Okay, I so, gotta look into it. So the TikTok Creativity Program beta, um, TikTok monetizes videos that are over sixty seconds. Okay. Um, and we've been seeing CPMs of like fifty cents to like two dollars CPMs. Wow, that's good yeah. for sure. So essentially, like the way we've we've averaged it out is like a million views gets you like a thousand bucks on TikTok, which you're pulling in easily. So that's yeah, but the videos have to be over sixty seconds. That's the problem, and yeah. I want to ask you about like optimal time length. Have you seen that yeah. matter at all? Yeah. So it's gone through fluctuations. So um, when when Graham Stephan went to film with Mr. Beast, Mr. Oh. Beast told Graham Stephan to tell me that the optimal time for a short is 30 seconds. Mm. That's the optimal time. Nowadays though, that, this was probably a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, um, it's, it's a little longer. So 30 to 45 is probably a sweet spot, even 30 to 60. Mm -hmm. The real answer is if the entire video is valuable, then that's the length of the video that it should be. Got it. But like 
I always say, don't think about the algorithm, think about the audience. And if you solve the audience's needs, the algorithm will solve itself. Mm. You know what I mean? I like that. Yeah. And do you try to spark debate in the clips? Yeah. So we intentionally like mess up, you know, like <laughs> we intentionally like change things around. Um, like someone will say something sus, <laughs> like kind of, yeah. And we'll, we'll add like a pause edit, like just like pause, <laughs> like real funny. quick, super quick pause. And uh, people will be like, bro, like what the heck? Or like w with Steve-O the other day, um, Steve-O was talking about he, he was filming with some rich Japanese dudes. Mm -hmm. And what we did was included a Photoshop of a K-pop star, <laughs> which is a Korean person, uh. not a Japanese person. So the comments were like, bro, like Steve-O said Japanese, but he showed a Korean person, LOL. Did anyone else catch this? Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. so we, we intentionally do that stuff all the time. I do that too, bro. We had yeah. a viral clip, the guy drinking piss or whatever. Um, <laughs> but he mentioned the doctor was from, I think, Puerto Rico. We put a flag of Cuba. Yep. And Perfect. just want to see what would happen. People got pissed, bro. Yeah, yeah. It, it went viral because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Intentionally making mistakes is definitely um, some psych psychological manipulation you could add into the clips. To make yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of people that are just looking to be negative on social media. Yeah. So if they see one little mess up, they're going to comment on yeah. it. You know what yeah. I mean? Definitely. Um, all right, you got, what, 15 clients now? Uh, I believe so. I, th I think I'll ask. I don't, I don't really count those things, to be honest. Uh, but yeah. 15, I believe, yeah. And it, can you even scale? Can you even handle more? Or are you kind of topped out? We're absolutely scaling, brother. Okay. We, we actually absolutely have a scalable way to make high quality clips at a consistently scalable, yeah. All right, so you could turn this into something big because the cash flow is great. The clientele is huge. I mean, this could be one of the biggest social media agencies in the world. Dude, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I guess, you know, VaynerMedia started as just doing community management. You know what community management is? Is that just managing DMs and comments? Literally, like, yeah. Like, just tweeting at people. Right. That's how they started. And uh, then they shifted and shifted and shifted. Um, Gary also said that he thinks that short-form content is the final iteration of content in the sense of, like, you know, when it was just tweets and then it was just photos mm -hmm. and then it was long-form video and now it's, like, shorts, right? So Gary V went on the record to say that he thinks that short-form is the final iteration before VR, mm. but but the thing is, in VR, all it's all it's like VR is going to be in the short term is going to be your feed just in the headset. So so essentially, the, you're watching content like this right now, right? You're just going to be watching it in your headset like this. But the same exact videos that we're creating will be in here. Wow. Yeah. So if anything, like the, the, our videos will just be even more valuable in the future. Yeah. I was big on VR a couple of years ago. I feel like it, it got kind of overhyped. Yeah. And I tr I bought the Oculus. It, I I didn't like it. If yeah, I honest. still have never used an Oculus. I, I, mean, I kind of want to go the longest possible <laughs> human to never put on an Oculus. Yeah, Dude, I've never put one on. It's so heavy. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's just, the graphics are so bad. They look really? like a 2000 PC. You know, the yeah. square box ones. Yeah, yeah. The graphics are like that. Yeah, my friend uh, wanted me to like try it on. He was like, oh man, I feel all nauseous, bro. Like your turn. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna put it on if you tell me that. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's interesting. But I think yeah. maybe five, 10 years, let the technology progress and see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh. But but we're excited for it because it, to us, like the videos are just gonna be formatted in there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see anything emerging in the short space? You've been in it for three, four years now. Do you see anything coming up? Um, Instagram starting to pay. TikTok creativity program beta is probably the like best thing for new creators right now. Mm -hmm. um, How do you get in that? You have to. I think you have to have like there, there's some there's some uh, requirements you have to meet. But if you post daily, you'll meet any requirement like okay. eventually. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to talk about the Mike Malak story of, of about sure. how you got him as a client. I remember you yeah. posting that one. That, that was a cool story, right? Yeah. So the way I got Mike Malak as a client was we were posting TikToks on our, you know, our, our company page, Social Media Money. And one day, like someone on my team texted me like, hey, man, you know, Mike Malak DM'd you, right? And I was like, what? So I go to the TikTok DM request and he DM'd us like a month ago. <laughs> and we never even saw it. And he just said like, yo, bro, like who makes these clips? Like, let, let's work together. And uh, thankfully, I had Mike's number. Cause I, I met him at a party with like Riley Reed like a couple years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's and, a whole nother podcast. Yeah, that's a whole <laughs> different podcast. Yeah, that's exclusive adults only podcast. <laughs> no, no, but but uh, yeah, so I just texted him. I was like, bro, like you DM'd me. Like, that's so funny. And then, yeah, we close and we work with him now. Nice. That's yeah. huge. So now so, you'll be able to get Logan too. 
We'll see. I will see, man. If he likes the results. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about Logan. I don't think Logan is uh, on his content game right now. I yeah. think he's on his Prime and WWE game. To be fair, he's making a ton of money off. He's those. making a ton of money, and I can see why. So why make content? Yeah, I used to watch Impulsive. I, I watched the first probably hundred episodes, but now yeah. I feel like they barely release them. Yeah, yeah, they've been taking breaks. It's funny, like when we signed Mike May, like, well, like all of a sudden he start like Impulsive started going on breaks, right? And like, yeah, but um, but yeah, so with Mike May, like honestly, like the takeaway there is like post content because you never know who's gonna cold DM you. Yeah, like straight up cold dm like he didn't even know of like th that i own the account just dm me on tiktok mm -hmm. that's the other takeaway too is check who dms you on tiktok because people actually use tiktok dms like really I, yeah you could dm any account on tiktok but wow but like i personally didn't know that people actually did that until Same. i checked and i had like 130 requests and mike malik was one of them wow i'm gonna check mine tonight i only yeah, check, check ig dms i feel like ig dms are the best though to be honest yeah ig dms are the best um, one thing for people out there that are trying to pitch stuff is uh, Instagram has DMs, they have DM requests, and then they have hidden DMs. Mm. You know about hidden DM requests? Yeah, I don't look at those. Yeah, so Instagram selects certain words, and if you use that word in the first DM, it'll get to hidden DM requests, and it'll wow. never see the light of day. So some terms that I know of is short form agency. <laughs> if you type in, hey, I run a short form agency, yeah. let me help you out, you're never gonna see the light of day. I get those every day, bro. Yeah. That's probably why they marked that one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You could turn it off too. So you might have it off, okay. but but there's other terms too. So the the best way to do cold DM is to DM an account that you haven't uh, DM'd yet, that you have access to, send them your DM, and if it shows up in their requests, then you're good. Mm. If it doesn't show up, it, that means it's in the hidden request. Yeah. And you know, you, you could then see what terms cause it to go to the hidden DM request. And also from my point of view, because I get a ton of DM requests of people trying to sell me shit, I don't like the long paragraph ones. Okay. I don't even read them most of the time because it just feels like you're copying and pasting it, to be yeah. honest. So yeah. like for me, I like simple stuff. I get a ton of guests on the show from DMs and I just keep it one, maybe two sentences. Yeah. Is that what you do? Well, look, so we don't DM, we don't do any cold DM anymore. Like thankfully, like all of our leads now are referrals and uh, people coming to us. But the way I got with Gary V, I might've told you a story before was I didn't DM Gary V. I DM'd the co-owner of Empathy Wines. Mm -hmm. And I found his name because like Gary was on a live stream and was like, yeah, like the co-owner of my Empathy Wines, Nate. Like, I love that guy, blah, 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 right? So I just went to Gary V's following, typed in Nate, found the co-owner of Empathy Wines. Mm -hmm. And the way I did it was I did some research on him. I saw that he was a fan of basketball. And so at the time, I just so happened to have a campaign with the Utah Jazz so what I did was I posted that campaign on my story and I ghost tagged Nate into that story so it would show up in his uh, story mentions, right? So basically like this campaign, uh, you know what a ghost tag is? When you when you tag them, shrink it. And oh, on IG it story? Yeah, yeah so, I do that all the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I did that to Nate. So it showed up and then when it showed up, I also like DM'd him saying, hey man, if you want help with social media, like I just did this campaign with Utah Jazz, I'd love to help with uh, Empathy Wines. Like I know this is a big thing for Gary Vee, mm -hmm. right? And that was like, he. his response was, call me, sent me his number. I called him. I was literally in school. I stepped out of class <laughs> and I was like, hey man. He's like, hey dude, love what you're doing. When can you fly to New York to help us out with social media money or social media? Wow. Money? Yeah. So that was the way I, I, the like there's very creative ways to do the DM stuff. I think the lowest hanging fruit really is the ghost tag uh, Instagram story method. Yeah. Put something on your story that is a value to them that they could see. And don't just like be like, hey man, check your DM and post that on your story. No, mm -hmm. post something that is like relative or relevant to your audience, but also like is of value to that to that person you're trying to get yeah. in contact with. Yeah. Ghost tag method is deadly, bro. There's so yeah. many ways you could use it. I use it for my networking events and it'll get me like an extra couple hundred people at yeah. the event. Bro, anytime I ghost tag someone famous, they see it. Right. They see it. Like people check that yeah. probably more than anything. Yeah, because they want to be like, they want to see like who tagged them in the story. And yeah. Make and, sure and honestly, Creators and influencers, their biggest currency is views and you know what their social perception is. So if someone's posting on their story about them, they need to see what they said, right? Because they they're posting out to the public, so it's almost like uh, damage control. Like, oh, are they like like talking crap about me? Like, is, are they spreading a controversy? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's how you could pitch them. You know? Yeah. You mentioned uh, the Ball family earlier. What yeah. was it like talking with Lavar Ball? Is he crazy or what? 
Yeah, I mean, at that time, he was peak LeVar. This was like, he was going on ESPN like every week. Um, the dude is awesome. I mean, he's the same way on camera as he is off camera, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, he had a, a bad business partner. Um, allegedly, this guy named Alan Foster. Have you heard mm -hmm. of him? I heard him. He stole money or something. Allegedly, allegedly, right? allegedly he stole like a million dollars. <laughs> He he's like he's like on the run from like the FBI. Like, Damn. Yeah, he doesn't have like a primary residence. Like he just is like traveling internationally. Like yeah, he's That's like a, a wanted man. Dude, yeah. people scam for like a mill and they think it'll last their whole lives these yeah. days, but a mill won't. Yeah, yeah, and then he he does like crypto pumps and stuff. Like oh, he's yeah, he yeah, he can never come cooked. back to the country. Yeah, probably. he's cooked. But but I mean yeah, like the JBA, the league that was around uh, Lamelo and uh, Jello Ball. That was a good time, man. It was it was a great league, a lot of you know cool networking, and I got to meet like little Yachty and nice. like all these like celebs were coming to the game. So that was a great time, yeah, for yeah. sure. Are you still out in OC? Yeah, Orange County. Or when are you moving Orange. to Vegas, man? I don't know, man. This is a pretty <laughs> cool city for the creator economy. There's a lot of uh, creator friends here. I was gonna. You should come to WeWork too. I don't know if you if you have like a. They're still open. Yeah, so WeWork is bankrupt, but they're still open. What? Yeah. I thought they went bankrupt like five years ago and closed everything. No, they went bankrupt like a week ago. Oh, it was only or a like, week ago? Or like a month ago. And their stock is like 20 cents a share. <laughs> but they're still in business. And honestly, like the WeWork here, it's like lively. Like there's a lot of people there in the creator economy. Um, Interesting. Is that the one in Town Square? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I gotta check that out. But yeah. how, who's paying for the rent if they're bankrupt? I don't know. <laughs> but i really don't want him to go bankrupt because it's it's a really cool have you been to we work no it's cool bro like coffee uh vibes i personally can't work uh just in my room mm -hmm. i need like some sort of uh you know liveliness to get the creative juices going yeah so we work is a vibe yeah i will say i agree with that separating the bedroom and the office yeah. was a crucial move yeah. for me dude because yeah. you could get depressed honestly yeah, just yeah. Locked I, I, I like i literally would have to be pointing at the wall in my room just like just, just me and the wall, like, nah, I need, like, some open space, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one of your clients I see every single day, Caleb Hammer, man, that dude's blowing up. Caleb, okay, so right now, Caleb Hammer is competing to get to a million subscribers before Ice Coffee Hour, Ooh. and what's funny is I'm running the shorts for both of them, Yeah. so, like, like I was at Graham Stephan's house the other day, and, like, we were jokingly, like, just looking at the numbers, like, Caleb Hammer is ahead of Ice Coffee Hour, and, like, Graham's like, bro, like, can you, like chill on the shorts like can you make can you make them like le like less good or like can you like maybe put a call to action on caleb's channel to go subscribe to ice coffee hours channel yeah but yeah honestly at this rate i think uh they're each like like maybe 50k subs away from a million subscribers mm -hmm. uh who do you got i think i got ice coffee hour Ooh. but but caleb's momentum is crazy right now yeah i'm i think his stuff hits because it's so relatable yeah relatable honestly honestly i i kind of think caleb is an industry plant by youtube how so i think youtube like juices his content i have heard that rumor that they favor creators yeah who's that one girl that lives in vegas was it sniper wolf well she's been she's been creating for forever right but, but yeah yes exactly yeah. yeah people were saying they favored her and then like People yeah. try to cancel her. It was a whole thing. Yeah. But do you believe that they favor certain creators, YouTube? I think so, yeah. I mean, they're a business. Right. So if something is generating revenue for them that works, why not help it continue making YouTube revenue? Yeah. You know what I mean? From a business point of view, it makes total sense. I think total people sense. get on the creator side, maybe get a little jealous or something. Yeah. Yeah. But but also, like, let's not write off Caleb. He posts three long-form episodes a week that are, like, two hours long. Damn. Yeah, three a week. Um, so the dude's hustling, grinding, you know what I mean? Dude, if I went on a show, I think it'd break the internet because I've lost tens of millions in the dumbest of ways. Really? It would actually break the internet. Do you have current debt? Yes. Is it bad debt? It's, it's sizable debt and it's, well, Celsius went bankrupt. Okay. So I had a ton of money in there. So I don't know if that's debt or whatever, but. Uh, I don't know. Like the people he, he come, he gets on are like $200,000 in credit card debt student loan debt and you know he helps him out but you know maybe yeah if you it, like if your finances are good he doesn't want you on the show oh, okay yeah but if your finances are like bad then he wants you on the oh show. so you got to be like in debt in debt you got to be like in poverty okay i thought it was just yeah. people that lost money in in dumb ways those are the clips i've seen at least <laughs> yeah 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 no i think like like uh they had like jack on before yeah uh, from the ice coffee hour and that was kind of just like just for fun 
but like most of them are like like people who just been through like trauma in their life and are in like debt like a lot of bad credit card debt right they just buy like the craziest car like people the car market takes advantage of low income people mm. like the this guy made like 40k a year and they got him like a hundred and twenty thousand dollar ram car <laughs> how do you even get a truck proof? bro because they're trying to finesse wow. they're trying to finesse him yeah i mean that's gonna take him his whole life to pay yeah off. His, his minimum car payment is like 1200 bucks a month and he only makes like three k a month oh my so god like almost half of his income goes to the freaking ram truck yeah and that's honestly probably how a lot of americans are living like yeah paycheck to paycheck like yeah that. yeah that's probably why it is so relatable the show yeah yeah it's because it's because it's like oh like yeah it's relatable yeah absolutely what's the most views you've gotten on a single clip i believe it's 88 million views and uh that video generated like a hundred and ten thousand subscribers wow. on youtube for graham stefan's channel was it the brett cooper one no it was uh it was it was a do you know who judge vonda b is no. judge vonda b so she is a like divorce lawyer who like literally just like handles cases between like divorce uh stuff so like this girl i think if i remember correctly she like quit her job intentionally so she wouldn't pay child support mm -hmm. and like graham just reacted to that video and it got 88 million views wow yeah. so reaction videos could be are those still hot right now or are those kind well of the way to do a reaction video is you get a clip that is already viral and then you react to it mm -hmm. um do you, you know like how brett cooper does it like she'll be looking at the camera and there's a clip playing like yeah, that yeah yeah that's a pretty good way to do it the way we do it with graham is just the clip is just playing in full vertical mm -hmm. uh just like as a regular clip so you're watching it let's just say you're watching the bobby lee podcast you're watching it thinking it's the bobby lee podcast it looks like it's produced by the creator and then the the reaction shows interesting so it's like play the whole clip and then the show the reaction yeah, yeah that's how a lot of twitch streamers make their content reaction videos yeah exactly i gotta look into that maybe incorporate some of that but there's no uh copyright on those no so w the other thing we do too is we edit the clip originally again got it so um the the 88 million viewed one that i'm telling you about was an was an original example where it wasn't clipped before we just created the clip ourselves um but yeah, if you're gonna re react to a clip like that, re-edit the clip. So go to the original asset mm -hmm. and uh, re-edit it. Add your own captions, maybe your own, uh, you know, whatever. Like got add it, your own it. original, uh, you know, edits, and then react to it. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. It's been fun learning about your world, man. Where can people find you and learn more about your company? Yeah, so uh, you can find me on Instagram at Josh Ordonez or uh, social media money. Just type in social media money and you'll find it. Boom, we'll link it in the video. Thanks for watching, guys. As it. always, we will see you tomorrow. Sir. Sure.